What's up guys and welcome to this video which is going to be the biggest trade of 2019. Now I documented the entire thing back in August so you probably remember it. So we're going to take a look, have a refresh of that position and get into the lessons that I took away from that as well. So without further ado, let's roll the intro and get straight into the video. Guys, so this is the Euro Pound trade back in August. So you'll probably remember me documenting this on the day in the life of my 2020 future self. So if you haven't watched that yet, possibly worth a revisit, refresh, just to see the actual live thought process because I took this in, in live time um, whilst I was filming, which is actually quite fortunate to be completely honest, but it's good to document that thought process. Um, and you'll see me do it a lot, right? Where I do live thought process a lot. I'm fascinated by the stuff that I'm thinking at the time of taking a trade. Hence the reason why I did that video and recorded it live. So definitely worth a refresh. But in regards to this trade, so this trade in total banked me 9%. So just over 9%, I think it was 9.02 in the end. Um, and I took two trades in the same place, different management styles. So in total it was 18%, but we're just gonna focus on the one trade today. Um, but then talk you through the different management styles. So if we drop to, or well, if we raise to the daily chart first and foremost, let's take a look at what I was looking at because there are a few key lessons that I wanna point out as well. And you know, even, even for me, like I'm not perfect. I look back on all videos sometimes and I'm like, hmm, I could have explained that a little bit better or I could have been a lot more clear with that or I should have mentioned this, should have mentioned that, could have mentioned this, but ultimately it's just a learning process and I really want to get better in 2020 at just communication skills and really develop the art of, you know, communicating better, delivering a certain message for you to extract the certain amount of value away from that. So something that I'm working on as well. So bear with me over time as I just evolve and grow. But hopefully so far within the videos that I do, hopefully it provides value and I'm going to really aim to provide as much value as possible in 2020. So it's going to be good. I'm very excited and um, it's going to be good. But with going back to this video in general, so the first the first mini lesson I want to take away for you guys is the psychology. And I've touched on this before, but I really want to focus this and focus the attention on the actual and um, the clarity of depth here. So let's go into it. So first and foremost, let's take a look at this position. So the trade here was from the top, but I want to I want to cast our eyes um, back to this area here just for a little bit of reference just for a bit, a bit of advanced forecasting um, and to show you the actual psychology of this as well. So let's take a look at this because it's the exact same structure, right? So we take a look at this, put in the double top. Cool, so what do we get here? If we break this structure down, what do we get? Well, if you're used to trading support resistance stuff, we can definitely see that head and shoulders formation here. So I remember watching this at the start of my trading journey actually, um, where we had that left shoulder that bigger head than that right shoulder, expecting that move to the downside, right? Which definitely could play out, but I find that personally, head and shoulders formations are more reliable on the lower time frames. So when, when we're at the top of a structure on the one hour chart, for example, I find them to be a lot more reliable than, than the daily chart, just because they can take a long time to play out. Um, doesn't mean they can't play out, because they can, but they just take, take a long time. So I do prefer them on the lower time frames, but Going back to this structure in general, if we just break down this, right, what can we see? We can see that we got that impulsive move down, this correction, which because of the fact that it was almost as large as the impulse, sometimes what we'll see is that when a correction is as almost as large as the impulse, so following the first impulsive move, if it's as large as, right, or almost as large as that impulse, quite often it can actually become neutral and break back up. So with corrections, you expect that to drop to the downside, if it's as large as the impulse, that can actually push back up, which is what we saw here. And we see that in recent times a lot now, which is which is just a slight involvement, which is good. So the first moving on to the first main lesson, which is the importance of using areas of interest as a guide, not absolute. So what I mean by this is that when we're, you know, for example, with this, right, we have this key resistance area naturally we're going to be looking for sellers to come into the market. Why? Because those bigger central banks, those bigger corporations are going to be getting involved in those sales within the market because of this key value area, that bigger double top, that high price. And it's the first time that we've felt that volatility since the October 2016. So it's a key area of value across the board, no matter what strategy you trade, you're, you're paying attention to this area as a whole, right? So the, the, the key lesson is this, number one, it's about how, how we get there. So a lot of people, including myself prior 
to six months ago was focused on the fact that price was in a specific area of value, but it, I wasn't focused on how it approached that area of value or what happens next. So for example, right, let's take a look at this. How do we get to this double top? Pretty correctively, we can argue that. Why? Well, impulsive nature, to just shed a bit of light, impulsive nature would be more so this, you see, very impulsive nature. Corrective nature is more so this, you know, low momentum candles leading up to the double top, which is good to see. So if we just use the bars pattern replay tool here, all I'm gonna use it for here is just a bit of reference, just to duplicate price, just to showcase a mini lesson here, right? Now, a lot of traders around the world are gonna be looking at that key resistance area, and if it breaks above, don't have a clue what to do next. It's not about the fact that we're at that key area, it's about how we get to that area. So we can see, pretty correctively, if price was, was to break above here, it's more the fact that we've broken correctively, which is the most important key little detail to take away into your trading. The reason for that is because if we break correctively, that could often just be a false breakout, right? Catching all the sellers on the wrong side of the market before the bigger move to the downside, which can ultimately complete this move here, right? Now, what we'll also find as well is that if for this to completely move to the upside, this would have to impulse to the upside, then we need a correction of some sort to confirm that impulse, then we move to the upside. What we can often get as well is that we can impulsively move to the upside, but once again, like I said before, it's about what happens next. So if we get corrective behavior, we're still likely coming back down unless the market shows us otherwise. Or if we impulsively break, but then equally just retrace that move, right? Then form continuation on long time frames, then we're coming back down to the downside. So that's a key little bit of information there, just to apply into your own trading, back test for yourself. Once again, I'll never talk about gospel on, on this channel, but it's more so, here's are the things that I've learned, go and back test this for yourself and see if it can help you. So that's what I find. Um, in terms of live markets, let's go in to see how this performed first and foremost. So yeah, we just broke above, catching people alongside the market. Think about the psychology of that. And then we just drop to the downside heavily at the full, this, this move here and this move here. So very nice trade. If we just take that same thought process and apply that into the live markets right now at the time of this trade, what can we see? Once again, you'll see the same thing happen over and over and over again across the board, which is why I pay attention to it, right? Even, even from respect of here, let's have a look at this. So people expecting the double bottom, we get the double bottom, but then break below. False breakout, breaks back in. Here, we see it here, breaks below, false breakout, breaks back in. We see it across the board, right? The same thing here, you could argue with this, right? We break the high, correctively break up in the form of the ascending structure, and then drop below. You see, we see it time and time and time again, which is right why I really, really try and hone this point home. But even just looking at this structure, let's look at the same psychology. So, bigger to the top, naturally sellers are gonna be looking to come into the market around these areas of value because of the area that we're in and the fact that we've not fulfilled this price since August 2017. It's an area value across the board, no matter what strategy you trade. And whether you try and catch the reversal or you wait for that first impulsive move is entirely up to you. Depends on the strategy you trade, but ultimately it is an area of value. People are gonna be paying attention to that. So that's the most important thing. Now, if we just use this as a bit of a guide, once again, go back to the good old VARS pattern tool Right, and all I'm gonna do is replicate this price action from, from here to here. Why is that? Because I'm focused on the psychology of what happened before. Broke the double top, caught people on the wrong side, drop. Can we get the same thing again? Right. Impulse to the upside, correction, as what happened before. Final push up, corrective move up, broke the double top, then break. Can we get the same thing? So you see, if we just replicate that, you see how similar that is. And it's not so fact that the move is similar, it's more so the psychology of what is happening here. The fact that we get the impulse, the correction, into the ascending nature, then we drop. So if we just take a look at this, and let's drop to the lower time frames now. Let's take a look at what was forming here. So at this point in time, we had this clear ascending structure, like so. Right, and that same lesson can be applied here as well. So ultimately, if I was looking at that in real, real time, I'd be looking at, cool, just wait for that one more push to the upside. Likely be something like this, in which it creates this section one, section two, section three, middle part of the pattern, push up before the bigger drop. That's what I'd be looking at. What we did get, and this is where you have to 
essentially use a little bit of discretion, but more so read between the lines. Um, but keeping towards a lesson, you see this. So essentially people would see that as a trend line, right? We see it as a structure, but let's say you see it as a trend line, one, two, three. After it breaks above, they're like, cool, is that invalidated? No, not at all. All you basically do to gain clarity, rein that back in, focus on this price. It's about what happens next. Once, once again, like I said before, on the higher time frame, same concept. Is this corrective, in which this pushes back down to the downside and drops? Or does this impulsively break, retrace, form continuation, confirming that move to the downside, then push down? So that's the psychology. So what happens next? Let's have a look. Market opens, a little bit of a gap, and we form that corrective nature, like so. Let the market calm down. And essentially we then got this. So we had a, a few confluence factors behind this. So this was a really nice trade. We had the one, two, three extension, of the pattern broke out correctively. Once again, you see the fact that it's broken the, the double top. So broken the key area of value. And then on the 15 minute as well, what I liked about this is that we had the ascending structure, but within that, it's just inception basically, but we got the move up, the retrace, correction, looking for that to push down. Right, and then if we just draw this in like so, entry order below, push down, drop to the downside. So that's where my entry was in terms of the trade. But let's see what I would have done different in terms of management. So let's just fast forward this out a little bit. And let's have a look at a real line. Cool. So at that first area of reference, so my first target with this, I would have been a lot more aggressive with this trade that I was in. So once again, I was in two trades on this, one normal style and then one for the short to medium term. That was playing as more of a more of a, sh a short to medium term hold, just set and forget, leave it. Um, but it was my first time managing a long term trade and I was a little bit too aggressive with it. So what can I learn from that? Well, if we take a look at this, the first area of value that I'll be looking to manage this trade is here so the fact that we completed this move knowing that once this structure breaks impulsively like we did here so pretty corrective and then we start to break impulsively right out of this ascending structure once this starts to break and commits to itself we have a very high percentage of filling at least at the beginning of this correction hence we get that rejection and push up now this is essentially my plan to manage more aggressively here because this is the area that will tend to find that we get a lot more and bigger corrections before the moves plays out. So let's say we get this, right? Or something even deeper to be completely honest. But here's a key lesson. We don't know, I don't know how far it's gonna pull back, right? That could be more flatter and still drop, but that can equally just push back up, take me out for a small profit and then completely drop. So in these situations, when we fulfilled this move, I'm happy locking profit, leaving just enough room for price to breathe in the respect that, if we just fast forward this, Starts to form continuation. So we move down, fulfill the 90% rule, impulse to the upside, then we get the correction. And then we can either get two things. So this can push up and continue moving to the upside in which I'm happy getting out of the trade. Or this can actually just push up, form more of a continuation like so, and then push back down or form something a lot deeper. So for that in mind, that's where I would have locked in profit above there. I think at the time of the trade, I had it locked in above there. But looking back in hindsight, um, and just slowly evol evolving my trading over time, I would have locked in around about 6% and then been taken out here for profit. So would have been happy with that trade. And then the other trade with the short to medium term play, let's just take a look at this. So this arguably played out very, very nice. So if I'd have left that and just, you know, completely just played that trade to the downside, my first target I remember was here second target was down here now in hindsight it looks like a beast of a trade and you know it would have been good to, to hold all that what would that be uh, you know like 32 percent so it's good to look back on that in hindsight but at the same time can't let hindsight dictate dictate the strategy too much so let's dig into that a little bit more detail so where i got out of the trade was here it was here this little wick here took me out so we start to correct around. I was looking for potential deep correction or push back up to the top in which that's where I managed to trade. 
Now, looking back on this, and in terms of the management, I would have been a lot more conservative with this, knowing what I know now, because of the fact that I manage it in congruence with the structures. So after we form this bigger impulsive move, then we form the correction, then we drop, that's where I lock in profit above the structure. Once this structure started to commit to itself and we actually break this structure like so, then I'd actually lock in profit here. So lock in profit here as we break to the downside. Now what I'm gonna do is drop is drop to the four hour just so I can see it in more detail, see it more clearer from a higher time frame point of view. So first target would have been here. Second target for the longer term play would have been here. So at this point, if you just look at this from a, from a higher time frame point of view, we've had that first impulse, had that first correction, expecting that impulse to move now to the downside, stop still above this area here right now. And this is from a, remember, this is from a short to medium term place, so entirely different management style to the position beforehand. And we're we'll starting to form that descending structure. So at this point, I'd be happy to lock in profit above here. Why? And because if we look at this from a pattern of its own, we have the impulsive move down following this correction, then we have this correction. But a bit more of a descending formation and can still pop to the upside. But at this point in time, that's the beginning of the correction. So I'm happy locking profit just above here. So let's lock in, I think it'd be around about 10 to 11%. Yeah, more so 11%. Like just above here, let's give it a bit more room. Cool, let's play this out. Descending formation. Breaking the low, forms continuation. This can drop or develop into a bigger structure. Push to the upside. And once again, you'll not, what you'll notice about these positions is that you can be in these trades for a long time. I prefer to be in these trades, you know, for, for three to four weeks and then be out versus three to six months. That's just my style personally. Um, but if I was just to manage this from a, from a medium to long term play. I'd lock in profit above here, give it just enough room to breathe, and then boom. So close to taking me out, probably around about 10 pips away, um, but ultimately it's just the psychology of creating that double top. Then we start to heavy drop, heavy drop to the downside. So once this breaks this structure, this is likely just gonna fulfill this move, which we've seen in real time. Yeah, we fulfilled the move basically, right? So we filled that bigger rule and how long did that take? So August to December. So literally you could be holding that for five months. Do I want to hold that trade for five months? Personally, no, I'm happy again now once again. Like I could, I could look back on this in hindsight and be like, yeah, cool, that's nice. We run at 34%, but then it's not realistic in, high, in live market conditions as well. So I'd be happy with my style getting out around these areas. Why? Because we've fulfilled that first target, right? This is the area that we can create much deeper structures, like so, in which we pull back um, and before the bigger drop. So I'd be happy getting out around these areas here for me personally, which leaves a bit of discrepancy from the trade that I banked. But at the same time, I can't let hindsight creep in too much and be like, yeah, running 34% should have banked 34 because not necessarily within my plan. And I will be happy taking 15 around that area once we've started to break here correctively. So it's good looking back on that position. Definitely a very nice position. And it's good to see that analysis play out as well. Um, it's good to see the before and after of that play now. And just from a daily standpoint, you can just see impulse correction as a pullback, drop, descending formation, fulfilled the entire move. So definitely a good move and something to learn key lessons from just to go back and study. Even something as simple as the psychology, which I just done before, it's a very important point just to study that, um, just so you can be prepared for 2020 because it wouldn't be unusual across the board for us to see moves like this on so many trades across the board in 2020. You know, if we just take a look back to probably not the best pair, but 2014, yeah, probably not the best pair, but the, these conditions, these impulsive conditions here, we're gonna expect that across the board on multiple pairs throughout 2020. You know, it's been a corrective couple of years. The market's just corrected sideways if you just look on a higher time frame point of view. But if we just take a look at something as simple as, you know, my dollar card, dollar card from a longer term point of view, 
there's a there's a lot there's a lot of trades lined up for next year. You know, this bigger move where, where when it commits to itself down here or from up here, it, there's there's some blinding trades for next year. So I'm looking forward to it. But ultimately, it's more so about studying studying this price action, studying the elite little bits of information to apply that into your own trading. So hopefully, you enjoyed this video. Um, very nice trade as a whole. We're going to get plenty more in 2020 with these conditions that we have shaping up across the board. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you've had a great 2019 too. Let's get ready for 2020 and I'll see you in 2020. Speak to you all soon.